James Holdings there. How you doing, my friend? How are you? I'm a, very good. I'm very good today. Up. I'm in Sweden. We had a uh, two-day event of uh, the Glass Better Bodies body competitions. Yeah. Regional today, pro qualified tomorrow. So lots of awesome people around. Lots of good friends. First time in Sweden? Or? No, not the first time. Uh, I've been here for Glass prior as well for the same the event earlier in the year. Um, and I have crossed the border to Sweden a couple of times with my partner who's from Norway um, because she has family in Norway and sometimes we drive over the border to get some sweets. <laughs> so uh, And some sushi maybe? Oh, I've tried, I tried that last time I was here. You did? Yes. So oh we my were, god. We, uh, we opened up a tin of that and the whole house, it, it <laughs> smelled like there was uh, 50 dead bodies in the house, I tell you, <laughs> yeah. it's bad stuff. I don't think I'd ever be eating that again. Did you eat it? I did, I did. I got it on video as well. But the taste is not that bad. The, the, okay, the so the sushi stremming, the taste is not that bad. It's purely down to this pungent, rotten smell that's going to put you off. <laughs> so my advice is pinch your nose, take a bite. Yeah. Take one for the team. So, so you're not going to join uh, Fuad's uh, challenge? No, I've already done it. That's why I put it on them. That's uh, why I said, look, I've done it, guys. You've got to do it. Now. Okay. So, yeah, until, until they all successfully do it, um, they don't have that badge of honor yet. So, Sue Stremming badge of honor, we've got that, they need uh, to earn it. So you sat uh, down uh, out this year competing? Yeah, I um, I wanted to compete at the, uh, I wanted to do the Flex Pro, Yeah. but I had a little issue with uh, kind of combustion yeah. earlier in the year, so I decided to get that sorted, um, and I suppose in the long run it was a good thing to get done because it saw me have some rest from the gym for about four weeks, mm. and you know, Rest is something that we don't really like to choose to take, but it is really important. So it was like two birds with one stone, sort out an issue that I had, but also get some much needed like rest time from the gym. You know, get enthusiastic about being in the gym again. And um, you know, absence makes the heart kind of grow fonder. So yeah, it was a good thing for me to get that done. Um, so now the next plan of action will be the Arnold Classic um, in Ohio in March. So okay. trying to step up a little bit now. Yeah. So when will you uh, start uh, the prep? Um, well, I just started working with Milos. Oh. So yeah. it depends when Milos thinks I need to start dieting, but there's still a month or two still with excessive amounts of food going in. So right now I'm in the middle of like trying to put weight back on and actually acquire some new muscle. Um, but I would imagine by October's end, November beginning, that we'll start thinking about you know, bringing those calories down and trying to get ready for the show because it gives us then like four months or so because I know the show's at the beginning of March um, and then uh, there's another show two weeks later which is the Arnold Classic UK um, and I'm really interested in doing that because they've put the prize money up. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, incredible. So the prize money for that show last year when I competed in it was 30,000 for the winner yeah. and then this year it's now 130,000. So it's going to be a big draw. There's going to be a yeah. lot of people coming to the show. So, yeah. so the Arnold, the two Arnolds. That's my plan for 2024. Yeah. And uh, hopefully qualify for the Olympia. Yeah, I hope so. Like I, I you know, um, it only takes getting it right once to become the champ. You know, and I've seen it happen. I've got friends. Samson's a friend of mine. You know, yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I saw Samson go from someone that was a top five in a normal professional show guy to an Arnold Classic champion in one season, just through sheer determination and just not giving up. So um, I think if you're someone that's able to win pro shows, then you shouldn't count yourself out on being able to win bigger pro shows because you've already done half the work. So now it's just a case of continuing on what we already do and just keep working hard because everyone started at the bottom. You know, yeah. Jay Cutler first Olympia was dead last. Yeah. Ronnie Coleman pretty much dead last. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if, if they if they lived with that attitude of oh I can never be number one, then they never would have been. So I, I believe that if I come into like a, an Arnold Classic, the best I can be, I don't see why like, someone like me couldn't win the show. Peaked properly. Yeah, I think you know I, I have a decent stature. I'm one of the slightly taller guys. Yeah. Uh, I may not be the most um, kind of aesthetic, but I'm also not the least aesthetic. So there's kind of like. I have a decent amount of musculature and I know that um, and I think with like proper peaking sustaining and ma maintaining a good amount of tissue for a prep I don't see why it can't be something um, worthy of getting a win for sure yeah. so, so you're working with Milos is yeah. it a lot of uh, high rep stuff now yeah the tr you know what I'll be honest the training is the thing that's taken the least change so far yeah. I'm slowly implementing more and more of that um, 
my sessions used to look pretty straightforward in like the beginning of the session and the end of the session would look very similar. Now what I've been doing is like towards the tail end of my workouts, implementing a little bit more of this kind of hyperplasia, you know, um, stress response, uh, metabolic kind of work where, you know, supersets, giant sets, stretching, just anything really to kind of agonize the muscle in a different way than just load alone. Mm. Obviously I like to go in the gym and hit the load first. I always go in the gym and try and do the heavy stuff to start. But um, I'm being far more mindful now of those other benefactors that can cause a physique to progress. So yeah, so there's definitely more Milos style training creeping its way in. Not fully there yet, but I think I think I really, really will find my groove with it, especially once calories start coming down. Because I've noticed when you're in a prep and you start getting that really good um, pumps and contractions, uh, you do anything in the gym to feel even more pump. And I think that's when a lot of that kind of training will actually feel even better. In an off season, when you're a little bit heavier and like the body fat level is a little bit higher, sometimes some of that kind of work you don't feel as much. Um, so we'll see. I think I think in the next few months we'll we'll notice a significant amount of increase in that kind of thing. What is your weight now? Uh, 138 kilograms, so it's like, I think that's like 305 pounds or something, um, give or take, up and down slightly, you know, we're, when you're traveling you move a little bit more, trying to eat the same amount, if not more if possible, um, you know, Milos with me is very much like, if you can eat more, do eat more, so I try not to be shy of the food, um, but yeah, weight's been floating around that for a, probably about three weeks now. Yeah. But, but is that difficult? Now when you're traveling to get to all the food in? Um, depends on the body part of the day, because you know, some body parts people are very different. You could take you could take someone else and they could train legs that day and it being a big body part it might stimulate the appetite. Um, but then on the other hand, legs might be so taxing that it actually gets rid of your appetite. So it depends on the body part. Like some days I wake up and I'm really hungry, it's very easy to get food in. Yeah. And then other days not so much. Um, smaller body part days are a little bit harder, you know, like we, we I have an arm day on a Saturday uh -huh. and, I, and I'll tell you now that doesn't make me overly hungry because it's quite a small body part, yeah. but um, you know, on the plus side, the day before I hit like chest and, and I go pretty heavy and hard on that, so you know, uh, a Friday might be a day where I'm really hungry, a Saturday not so much, but it swings and roundabouts, not every day is the best day and you just got to try and get as many good days as you can, so um, even on those days where it is hard to eat, I just I just make sure I stay up long enough to get the food in if I have to. Yeah. And, and Milos is quite flexible. You know, if you can't get a solid meal in, he would rather you go down the route of getting the same macronutrients from, I don't know, like I use a lot of like hydrolyzed casein yeah. um, and then like cluster dextrin and stuff like that. I don't try to like rely on it, but if it came to the point where it's like, well, I need to get that much yeah. protein, that much carbohydrate, then I, I'd much happily do that and not do that. Yeah. So uh, um, yeah, so we make it work. Yeah. We make it work. Just depends. I was watching a, a video last night from your Instagram when you were squatting. I think it was 260 for 12 reps. Yeah. I think it's kind of like the that's yeah. the standard shed squat set. <laughs> that's 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 like you're so fucking strong. I don't know. Do you know what? Because no, that, that that for me is like you always been strong there. Not always, but for a long time because I I used to squat really heavy and then I realized my form wasn't good. So actually for a year or so I actually stripped back the weight and started to squat from scratch again and retaught myself how to squat um, with no ego attached. So it's like, it took me a long time to get strong on it again, but the form was so much better. Um, and then I think, you know, you stick with an exercise. If you enjoy an exercise, you stick with it. It's kind of inevitable that it's going to get stronger. So I built the squat back up after years of... Um, doing it what I would consider a little bit wrong um, and you know I, I think structurally it just seems like one of the movements I get on with just feels good on the body I feel very comfortable in the squat so um, you know it's uh, it's an exercise I have no fear with I can literally put anything on the bar get under it and I'm not nervous at all whereas other exercises like a deadlift for some reason I get really nervous um, but squats I have no nerves at all um, I love them. one of my favorite exercises. Have you ever done, done a, a one rep max? One squat? Yeah. Uh, not one rep max. I've done a lot of doubles, um, some triples. I, think I, I did like triple with, um, I don't know what it is in pounds, but I've done like triples with like 342 kilograms. And um, 
and I, and I probably could have got a couple more reps. So I, I think there's, I think there's definitely an 800 pound yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in there because 800 would be like 363 or something like that. So um, I, there was a point in my life where I was like, I'd like to dedicate a year to squats and do a 400 kilogram squat. Yeah. But it's, you just can't um, when you're you're training for bodybuilding it shows. It's very hard to put together a a system that's going to benefit you to that degree in, in regards to progressing your lift. So um, it hasn't been something I've been able to do yet, but. Who knows, in the future, maybe I'll be able to do it. Looking forward to see you uh, in Ohio. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I'm, uh, they, I believe the application process begins in October. Obviously, it's an invitation only. It's a big show, so they they do literally only pick the creme de la creme. So if I can if I can get myself in there, then I'll be very, um, number one, flattered, honoured. Um, and number two, I'll make sure that I don't waste the time and I'll make it worth the, uh, the invite. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be... It's going to be good. Um, looking forward to it'll be my first show in the States for a long time, bar the Olympia, because I haven't done um, any of the other shows for a long time. I think last time I competed in America was like, maybe at a Tampa Pro or something yeah. quite a few years ago. So I'm looking forward to getting back up there. For sure. So good times ahead. Best of luck, sir. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, I hope everyone comes and checks you out. Make sure they subscribe to your podcast on your channel and uh, let him know what you want to see. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. Thank you guys.